Stop worshipping this false god democracy and come back to worshipping Allah. Radical Islam is spreading. The government is cracking down. Together, we will defeat you. They've made supporting ISIS a crime. As control titans, I spent two years with one of the most extreme groups in Britain. He said, is it OK to behead someone? This is a front to recruiting people for ISIS. Meeting the YouTube sensation. Obviously, if people watch my videos and get radicalised, then I'm not responsible for that. You're lying. You're lying. The extreme provocateur. This black flag you see here, one day is going to be on pinned down in streets. And most shockingly, a hate preacher. British government go to hell. Who would become one of the world's most wanted men. The new jihadi John may well be this father of four from East London. You just say your name? Yeah, my name's Abu Rumaysa. It's January 2014, and I'm spending the day in Walthamstow, northeast London, with one of Britain's most vocal hate preachers, 30-year-old Abu Ramesa. You grow up around here? I know I grew up in North London, actually. I grew up in Palmer's Green. Uh, my background is I was um, actually grew up as a non-Muslim from like a Hindu, Hindu background, and I became Muslim when I was about 19, and I just moved here when I uh, got married. Now a father of four, he runs his own business renting out bouncy castles for children's parties. Do your family ever worry about uh, your safety or their safety? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think it's natural that um, there is this kind of tension and caution as well. Uh, you've seen what far-right groups are capable of. So there is this uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, worry and concern. But that's, that's part of the struggle, that's part of the package. Uh, we believe, you know, if we follow the path of the prophets, we're going to inevitably face these consequences. It's a bit of a mess. I'll show you. These are the uh, black flags of Islam. This one is actually the, uh, the flag of the Islamic State. So, um, one day when the Sharia comes, you'll see this black flag everywhere. One famous scholar of Islam, Sheikh Omar Bakri Mohammed, he said that the black flag of Islam will one day fly high over 10 Downing Street. And that was about 10, 15 years ago. And, you know, that was like, it seemed ludicrous back then. But if you look at the way society is moving on now, you can see that it's a very, very real possibility with the way Muslims are coming forward in this country. Abu Ramesa has been a radical Muslim for 10 years. I contacted him via a website for a group advocating strict Sharia law in the UK. Yeah, so basically, translation of this Arabic is there is no one worthy of worship to follow or obey in truth except Allah and that Muhammad is the final messenger. And so we don't believe in sovereignty for the Queen. We don't believe that authority should be in the hands of the non-Muslims. We want to see this flag in every single country in the world. <laughs> The Muslims are gathered outside Paddington Green Police Station. We will never give up calling for Islam. Whether you arrest us, whether you imprison us. Abu Ramesa is the PR man for a group of radical Muslims who frequently organize provocative protests against the British government. Theresa May, you are a tyrant. David Cameron, you are a tyrant. The public in this country they're living in ignorance. Their country is involved in war. And if they continue to remain silent and have this kind of like uh, indifferent approach, then it's not going to help them. Look, one man died in Woolwich, Lee Rigby, and the whole, whole country went up in uproar. There are many Lee Rigby's in Muslim countries. And if these issues aren't addressed, then we can only expect more carnage in this country and more cycle of violence. BBC News at 10 o'clock. Nine men have been arrested in London as part of an investigation... A radical Islamist, Islamist preacher and political activist is among nine men who've been arrested by counter-terrorism police in London. Abu Ramesa is one of the nine men arrested. After three days of questioning by counter-terror police, he's released on bail. Two days later, he disappears. Last seen at Victoria Coach Station with his heavily pregnant wife and four children. 
Months later, it's assumed that he's gone to Syria and he's openly revered as a hero by his friends and colleagues, including one of the men who was arrested with him, extremist preacher Abu Halima. When was the last time you saw him? The day when we got arrested in uh, September. I saw him at the police station after that, I never saw him again. The whole time he was in the cell, he was just reciting Quran, you know, just mm -hmm. loud reciting Quran. So when I saw him, it got a bit of tranquility to my heart. His legacy still lives on till now, you know. His material is still the best material you can get. You know, we, we, we can't compare to it. The guy was like a machine, he was just turbocharged, always, always on the go. With Abu Ramesa gone, I've tracked down the rest of the radical group outside Boots on a North London high street. They're carrying out dawah, which means to recruit not Muslims to Islam. Abu Ramesa's role as senior spokesman has been taken over by Mohammed Shamsuddin, a divorcee with five children, and he's quick to justify their radical message. The British government doesn't want to look at its own foreign policy. All he wants to do is look at Muslims, condemn Muslims, target Muslims. You're stigmatizing a whole community. What's going to happen? You're going to face a backlash in this, in this country. Do you think a backlash is coming? Of course it is, of course it is. If you're going to suppress the people for so long, you're going to suppress and suppress. I mean, it's like, it's like a tinderbox. It's going to explode. So we're praying back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The atmosphere changes when members of the group move to confront a passing Kurdish procession. Kurds are also Muslims. In the Middle East, the Kurdish army is currently fighting ISIS. All disbelievers, all kuffar. Allah Allah He's going fast shouting ISIS terrorists. Outnumbered, they retreat to the safety of Wood Green Shopping Centre and disperse. I'm nervous about providing this small group with the media platform they crave. But with ISIS on the rise and the terror alert level severe, it seems essential to understand the motives and activities of this secretive network. Why do you like this location so much? It shows the other side of UK, you know, the, the working class neighbourhoods, the sort of, you know, like, like the dirt and uh, just how it looks, you know, just looks like ghetto sort of. Four days later, I'm meeting an old friend of Abu Ramesa, fellow preacher Abu Halima, who I'm surprised to learn sometimes works as a London bus driver. But today, I'm thinking, you know, over there where they got that nice light, I'm thinking we filmed there. There's a lot of noise from the traffic, but there's a nice bit of light. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah nice, nice bit of light. Let's see how it looks on the camera. He's becoming a social media sensation, regularly making videos for YouTube and Twitter to recruit young Muslims to radical Islam. They're doing this carrot and stick approach. The carrot is where they say to you, OK, yeah, if you embrace democracy, we'll fund your masjid. We'll give you knighthood. We'll look after you. But if you reject our systems, if you reject our systems, we will oppress you. We will arrest you. We'll hassle your whole family. We'll take away your money. We'll try and take away your houses. We'll try and take your children from you. Stop worshipping this false god democracy and come back to worshipping Allah. Good. What do you think? Yeah? One take. <laughs> you know, obviously, when I started at first, it was, uh, you know, I was speaking too loosely and I was he kept saying things like, in it, and in it, in it, in it. I've been trying to remove that, in it. It's, it's not a good look. It's a criminal offence to support a terrorist organisation like ISIS. But it's clear to me that Abu Halima is sympathetic. However, when challenged, he refuses to admit this. For the record, I don't support the Islamic State. <laughs> Just for the record, I'm not looking to get nicked. <laughs>
Abu Halima wants to live under Islamic law, but his passport has been cancelled by the Home Secretary. You know, Theresa May can solve this problem of extremism very quick. Give all of us back our passports, let us leave, and there won't be a single extremist left in this country. Would you take your family with you? If I could, yes. And if not, would you go anyway? Yeah. What do you think you'd do when you get there? Live under the Sharia. <laughs> like, what yeah. would that involve? That would involve me sitting there practicing Islam the way I want to practice and getting paid, getting my JSA but without having to sign on. <laughs> Whilst he's stuck in the UK, Abu Halima is trying to convert Britain to strict Islamic law, where full covering of women, outlawing alcohol, gambling and homosexuality would be enforced by extreme punishments. All the punishments, they're legislated by Allah. The act that the homosexuals do, that act is something that Allah curses. Allah curses that act, so that is forbidden. That is forbidden. Anyone that gets caught doing that act, they will be punished. And what's the punishment? Well, one of them is obviously chucking them off high buildings. And that's the one that uh, the Islamic State seems to be implementing. Where would the punishment happen? Would it be out in the square? Of course. Of course, because this is a deterrent, deterrent. People will see and they'll know, OK, we're going to get named and shamed like this as well. We're going to get publicly humiliated like this as well. Everyone's going to know what, what we've done. So it, it works. It works. What about Elin? Do you think that would happen? In Elin? Uh, what could happen in Haven Green? They could make a little spot in the middle over there or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> Even comment it could happen in. <laughs> you think a lot of people would come and watch it? Of course. It's not quite gruesome. No, people like that kind of stuff, innit? So this area here, you think this could be good for public punishments? Of course. So for instance, if someone's committed adultery and uh, it's been witnessed, then he'll be punished according to his crime. And what would happen if he committed adultery? What would be the punishment? Okay, if he's committed adultery, then uh, obviously he'll be stoned to death. And do you not find that barbaric? This is perfect. So we, we're not going to condemn it. We're not going to say it's barbaric. We're not going to say it's not good. Do you think anything will ever be under the rule of the Islamic State? Of course. The whole world will be under the Sharia soon. Why are you such a troublemaker? I'm not necessarily a troublemaker. Yeah, you are. I'm just yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. I'm, I'm you are a shocking example of your faith. You are a very bad man, Mohammed. You should hang your head in shame. Go away. 729. Mohammed Shamsuddin is the senior spokesman for a group of radical Muslims. He suffered with chronic fatigue syndrome since he was 18 and lives on benefits. He's been hard to pin down for filming. He finally agrees, but is even more careful when I start asking him about ISIS. You could get 10 years just for saying something which is reckless or careless. That's what I'm saying to you. Even though you didn't possibly mean it like that, you know what I mean? You could have possibly meant it innocently, but because that innocent word could land you in prison 10 years. My dear Muslim brothers, there is a war taking place. Mohammed's self-censorship doesn't prevent him from promoting views sympathetic to ISIS outside Regent's Park Mosque, a place opposed to these demonstrations and keen to distance themselves. If you don't like what I am saying, then you disagree with Omar and his messenger. As Muslims worship inside the mosque, Mohammed is outside denouncing democracy and the UK government. The Sharia is coming to the UK. This black flag you see here, one day, he's going to be on Penn Downing Street. Hey, you are God, go to Syria and live there. As Muslims leave the mosque, it's clear he's not getting much support. Instead, they strongly disagree. We're going to arrest David Cameron. We're going to arrest George Osborne. We're going to arrest every single member of the Conservative Party and put him on trial for the crimes against Muslims. Takbi! Mohammed won't worship in the mosque today. Instead, he leads his group for a prayer session in Regent's Park. Anyone got cuppers? Guys, determine the Qibla, please. Come on. Somebody determine the Qibla. Anyone got a smartphone? Oh, sort out the Qibla, bro. He's just going to find out the direction for prayer. This way, lads, lads, lads. Come here, come here a bit, come here. The group display the black flag of Islam. 
a symbol associated with Islamic armies for the past 1,200 years, but one that's regularly adopted by extremists, including ISIS. I can't help but think that he's being actively provocative. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. The real life is the life of the Akhirah, not this life. This is not the real life, my dear brothers. This is a passing time for us. So this is a type of jihad for you, that you came out to do da'wah, enjoining good and forbidding evil. And don't be deterred. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allah. As the prayer session ends, the police arrive. La ilaha illallah. A call from a member of the public that you may have had someone had an ISIS looking flag on them. What's an ISIS flag? Unless someone's hiding in their okay. trousers, then we don't have that. We don't have, we don't okay. have, yes, have any of you got the personal details on you? Would like to speak to you? No, I don't think so. Details. There's no personal details on you. Yeah. No, be here. Don't touch me. Don't, don't touch me. I'm under arrest. You're detained. Detained for what? You're detained. Are you insane? For the Are you insane? What's this? You're not searching me. What's the warrant? Are you insane? Search. Search, for what? Face. search for what? Why are you touching him? What, 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 what are Search. Why? 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 Information. Why? 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 I'm talking to you. Listen. Why? Don't talk over me. Why? Listen. Why? Who gave you the information? A member of public. Ooh, which member of public? You're lying. You're lying. No, You're lying. No, I'm not. You're a liar. You're all detained. Yes. For the purposes of a search. Okay. Under section four of the terrorism Where's act. Where's the? You're lying now. Which section of the terrorism act? Section four. Which section? Which is what? Glorification? Instigation? Preparation? We're not stupid. We know the law. What's I'm going to now start What's searching you. You're detained man. for the purpose of the search. Don't touch me, man. If you no, 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 resist, no, no, no. I will no, no, no. use no, no. reasonable force. Let me search you. 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 Yes. Let me search you. Okay. I'll be making a record. The group is searched and detained for an hour without finding the flag. They're released without any charges. Where you seek to spread hate, we will disrupt you. Where you break the law we will prosecute you. Where you seek to divide us, we will stand united, and together, we will defeat you. The British government are ramping up efforts to prevent young people from being drawn towards terrorism. Now they're targeting individuals like Mohammed and Abu Halima and their extremist propaganda. The pair have been told that soon they'll have to appear in court to see if they face charges for terrorism. Abu Halima has been arrested again and questioned over encouraging terrorism and a threat against a Birmingham-based imam in one of his videos. Charges he denies. Where are you, bruv? We came to your end and you were nowhere to be seen. You were nowhere to be seen, innit? None of you. All of you become cowards, innit? Takbir! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Having been locked up for three days, he's allowed home to his wife and family. The charges are dropped but the police have imposed restrictions on his activities. When they released me, they gave me uh, the bail conditions. They were signed daily over there, Wembley Police Station, between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. daily, every day, signed there. Uh, can't use Twitter, WhatsApp, YouTube. I feel disabled, to be honest. Oh, yeah, and another thing, you know what they raided my house? Apart from taking all the electronics in the house, they took my daughter's Nintendo Wii U. And apart from taking a Nintendo Wii U, they took a Mario Kart CD. What is there about Mario Kart that they want? I, I don't know. As Abu Halima is banned from posting videos online, he's been forced back on the streets. Learn about Islam, sir, have a read. It's Saturday night on Edgware Road, a Middle Eastern melting pot in the heart of central London, where different faiths and nationalities rub shoulders. Alhamdulillah, the Muslims have gathered here in Edgware Road to pray to la ilaha illallah, Muhammad al Rasulullah. But Abu Halima's message is still connecting with young Muslims. Does that make you feel good? Yeah. Now a YouTube star, his fame means he's constantly being recognised. We come to give da'wah, you know, to invite people to Islam and to command good for good evil, you know? However, not all Muslims who recognise Abu Halima agree with his radical views. You're told to suck his mum, to fuck him up, a Muslim for fuck you. Are you a kafir? Who's a kafir? Who's a kafir? Why are you trying to do something? Hey, bro, bro, bro. Abdullah Dean, 
white convert. An ex drum and bass MC is quick to respond. Brother, I hate getting him to beast with a long canise on. Got to go like this. <laughs> the confrontation attracts a large crowd to the Dawa stand. I doubt you even the Muslim. You're probably a Shia, isn't it? You're probably a Shia, isn't it? They're all kufar. They're all kufar. What? Who could do anything about it? What? What? Shia or kufar? What? Do something. You can chat whatever you want because you're chatting all shit. Radicals like Abu Halima believe that millions of Muslims are kafirs disbelievers who don't practice real Islam. Nah, bruv, I've got no time for Shia, bruv. I've got no time for them. Listen, this is ISIS. 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 This is what you see on television. Right now. ISIS. What are these, bruv, man? ISIS. Daesh. Why am I Daesh? You make an assumption. I live in the UK. Daesh, as you want to call them, are in the UK. I'm living in the UK. No, no. ISIS. You don't know nothing about the story of Afghanistan and you're here standing talking rubbish. So if you love Afghanistan, why did you come to my country? So if you love your country and your religion, why did you convert it to my deen? Yes. Why did you convert yes. it to my deen? I was born as a Muslim. Why did you convert it? I would love to leave this country. You got a one way ticket to go, bro. Go. 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 Let's go, Rocky. This guy is not a Muslim. He's giving Islam a bad Muslims name. Does it quite often come back to ISIS now? He didn't even mention ISIS. Have they got completely the wrong end of the stick? You don't support ISIS. I'm not saying I don't support them. I believe there's goodness in them. Um, <laughs> but. You know, I have never once come out on a platform said I support ISIS. The fact is, I support what the creed of Islam teaches. If ISIS say it, if Al Qaeda say it, if the Imam in the local mosque says it, and it's the Hakka, I have to accept it no matter who says it. It's been over a year since I'd seen Abu Ramesa and he'd skip bail. New photos have appeared on Twitter of him with his children living in the Islamic State. I want to show them to Mohammed and his friend Zach to see what they think of where their friend is now. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. I feel like crying, brother. It was just yesterday I was on the down store with his brother, you know? It was just yesterday, brother, I was eating with this brother, man. Allah Akbar. How does it make you feel to see that picture? Envious. Envious and... Uh, Envious of what? Envious of... He's at the best place you can be in a land where they implement the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What better place is there? Does it shock you that his son's got a gun there? No, not Probably a toilet. What's the big deal? It looks like a real one to me. How are you going to, to, to determine that? <laughs> <laughs> what about the AK-47 that he's got over his shoulder? Yeah, that's pretty real, yeah. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. That's he's, pretty real. He's, he's a soldier of Allah, subhanahu wa How does it feel to know someone that's now an enemy of the it's state? An honor. It's an honour to uh, feel that he's my Muslim brother. Because at the end of the day, he knows, and I know very well, that life and death is in the hands of Allah. Yeah. When he's about to die, no one can bring it forward and no one can delay it. When Allah has decreed for him to die, which was written for him the day he was born, or even maybe before, yeah. it's already written for him when he's going to die. Yes, he's not going to die any minute sooner or a minute later. That's right. And this brother now, we're not even the sand underneath his feet. As the hadith says, the mujahideen, they are the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the most beloved to Allah. And the believer, the average believer, the insan, are not even the sand the grain of sand underneath their feet, the one who fights for Allah. That's the status of him now, so that's what I meant why I'm envious. How many people do you know that have gone? I know a fair, a fair amount, yeah. I know a fair amount. On the 20th of September 2014, you were arrested and interviewed regarding your involvement in the following offences. Following a detailed investigation, I don't know how detailed that was, yeah? 
a decision has been made that this matter will not be proceeded with. Uh, you're sincerely the moron of Counterterrorism Command. Mohammed, Abu Halima and the other members of their radical group are attending court this morning to find out about their terrorism charges. They'd all been arrested in anti-terrorism raids 10 months ago and bailed until today. Allah has got no further action yet. No further action. Enter the F to the A. <laughs> Enter the F to the A. Mohammed has been released, but some of the others have been charged and face trial for inviting support for the Islamic State. Mohammed and the others from the group rushed to court in solidarity. Abu Halima was also due to face terror charges today. What's happened to you? I got uh, rebelled uh, until 15 September, me and uh, Abu Allah, both of us. So why is that? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> Always happens, bro. The national press eagerly await a statement from the group. After five hours, those in custody are denied bail. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to make a statement on, in the capacity as, as, as a personal friend. Shall I? You think? What are you going to say? Shall I just say as, as, as a friend? Yeah. Theresa May has made it quite clear that she's now dealing with those people who are not necessarily breaking the law, but on the margins of law. And my message to the Muslim community in the UK is this. This is a war against Islam and Muslims. The dawah must continue. The struggle must continue. The call must continue. And one day Islam will be dominant and the black flag of Islam will be over, over, over Downing Street. Allahu Akbar. You're not joking, huh? No, I'm not at all. <laughs> Gut-wrenching, isn't it? But I'm not going to express that to the media, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to show them any weakness. For the past 20 years, Mohammed has been a vocal member of a radical Islamist group. He joined at university after meeting hate preacher Omar Bakri, also known as the Tottenham Ayatollah. By the second year of university, he dropped out couldn't continue my academic career, as you want to call it that, because of the religious beliefs I adopted at the time. Who made you make that decision? I made the decision for myself. How did your family react? Obviously, they weren't too happy, no? I mean, I didn't really, but I mean, at the end of the day, they had to accept my decision. In his 20s, he became an active member of the group and a close student of Omar Bakri, the radical hate preacher who fled the UK in 2005 and is currently in a Lebanese jail for supporting terrorism. I would consider him as uh, not just a spiritual mentor, somebody as, a, as a, a, a close, I mean, close figure in my life. He's the person that had the most effect in my life, no doubt about it, in terms of my, uh, moulding my views about More than about your father? Things. Oh, yeah, definitely, without a doubt. Yes, Abu Halima, the man of enraging the disbelievers, is here. He is the one who enrages the disbelievers just by his beard. <laughs> After five months of filming with Mohammed and Abu Halima, it's become clear that they're careful about what they'll admit. They told me that they'd watched ISIS execution videos, so I played them what I found online to see if I could get an honest reaction from them. All right, there's a guy with an RPG now, and he's fired it into a car with the guys inside it. Quite sweetly sounds that come back. Yeah, well, obviously they're dying. I don't expect anything else. Okay, these people now are in a cage before I can see him being drowned. <laughs> it's a deterrent as well, isn't it? If a spy knows he's going to die like that, the worst way you can imagine dying, they're not going to want to do it, isn't it? Guy's foaming at his mouth. You know what I mean? Wow. And I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> I think I read the reports about this yesterday. About how these guys had detonation ghosts wrapped around their necks. Wow. Oh, wow. It's new quality, bro. 
That's that full key or something. <laughs> How does it make you feel when you see it? Like you say, it's just horrific. It is horrific. I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, it's a horrible way to die. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's not just bigger. The video is shocking, but possibly more shocking is their reaction. I wondered if they'd laugh so casually if I was being executed by ISIS. I don't think I'd be able to watch it, bro, to be honest. I don't think do I'd be able to watch it. Do you think you'd be upset it. or do you think it would serve me right? No, of course, you'd be upset, upset me, innit? Obviously, for someone I know... I would say, Jamie, why didn't you become Muslim? Because now you're going to be in the hellfire. Purify your intentions, inshallah. It's a week since the court hearing, and Mohammed is formulating ever more provocative plans. Death to Pakistan! What did Pakistan do for the Muslims? What did Pakistan do for the Muslims? Mohammed, now the most senior member of the group, organizes a deliberately provocative demo outside Southall Mosque on Pakistan Independence Day. Offended, the locals vocally oppose Mohammed's group. Even the mosque elders come out to denounce their actions. With the police presence growing, the group slip away having filmed the confrontation, sharing it on social media. The video later goes viral in Pakistan. It's not to make a celebrity at the brothers. It's as a, as a form of encouragement to look, the brothers in London are doing it, you need to do it as well. You know what I mean? The British government are becoming increasingly concerned about young Muslims being radicalised online. In 2015 alone, they stated that they'd foiled seven terror plots, many of which were planned using social media. Britain's youngest convicted terrorist is beginning a life sentence tonight after masterminding a plot to behead police officers at Australia's Anzac Day Parade. Sentencing the boy, who was just 14 when he was arrested, the judge said it was chilling that someone so young could have intended to carry out a massacre. Abu Halima has been linked to this major terrorism plot in Britain's highest court. The evening news are interviewing him about his alleged involvement in radicalising the 14-year-old boy who plotted to murder police officers. The prosecution is saying today that you played a role in radicalising this boy. OK, I, I don't believe that's true. If that were the case, then the police would have charged me, basically. From the evidence they had, they had all, all the evidence, all the WhatsApp conversations, all the Twitter conversations, and they didn't see anything to charge me, so... Well, the thing that I was hoping he didn't ask and he didn't ask me was just what I said. That would have been a disaster. What would, how would you have got around that? I would have got around that by saying uh, I don't support that group uh, I said, as a group, but I support the Sharia and the establishment of the Sharia. How many messages did the boy send you? I speak to him regularly. I speak to him like once a day at least. Did he ever mention <sighs> violence and is it okay to bad people? I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. He did ask that once, yeah. What did he say? He said, is it okay to uh, behead someone? And I was like, no. No, I clearly said no. So obviously now he must have gone and spoke to someone else. Because it wasn't me, I didn't tell him to do it. I didn't tell him to, you know what I mean? He basically got arrested and uh, he made a quick Twitter account and he's like, uh, everyone on Twitter that knows me, if you've got my number, anything like that, delete it. Because I've just been, uh, I got raided and arrested. I've just been released, so and I won't be around anymore. So I straight away DM'd him, said, is everything all right, bro? Do you need anything? And he's like, listen, bro, you're going to get in trouble, don't... Uh, associate yourself with me. I said, well, I'm in enough trouble anyways. <laughs> it's easy to forget that Abu Halima hasn't always been a hate preacher. As his infamy grows, I'm keen to know more about his journey towards radical Islam. The place where I grew up originally was uh, North West London, South Kilburn. 
And obviously, growing up, it was, it was a bit racist as well. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, 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 I saw a bit of a fair bit of racism as well. Like what kind of stuff? People with khakis, you know, seeing my parents get spat at, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. How does that make you feel, seeing you get parents get spat at? It's, it's not a nice experience, isn't it? And it, brings, it builds up hatred inside of you, isn't it? You know what I mean? Where would be the parents when they moved over here? My dad moved over here very young, in the 50s. My dad moved over in the 50s. He was here from the 50s, and my mum came over in the 70s. Did he like Britain? Yeah, he liked it. He liked it a lot. Do you think he would agree with your outlook on Islam now? Did he follow a similar path to you? Probably not. Probably not. But obviously, he passed away a long time ago, but probably not. How old were you when you kind of found Islam? I started practicing properly in my 20s. But I never understood Islam until a lot more recently, when I started understanding Tawheed. Anything that's worshipped, followed or obeyed other than Allah, you have to reject it. Even if it's your own family, you know? And sometimes that can be hard, because you start losing people. You know, people start becoming distant from you. Because obviously, what you're calling for, it opposes them. It opposes their way of life. But in order for you to be a Muslim, you have to do this. If your dad didn't agree with your views, do you think he's not allowed into paradise then? Of course. Well, say so he's gone to the hellfire? Of course. Obviously, I wish good for my dad, you know? Basically, if you see a train come past here, that means they're going to come out and walk this way. It's a nice shot, you know. Is that a nice shot? Take a picture, let me see. See, Jamie, I owed my beard today, innit? That's why it's nice and shiny and it's got a little curl to it. I put a lot of oil in it. <laughs> I usually use olive oil, but I got this, like, this uh, olive oil cream. It's like a cream, like a moisturising cream for the, for the hair, innit? It's nice, man. It's very nice. It's got a nice smell to it as well. It smells like vanilla ice cream. Learn about Islam, sir, have a read. Learn about Islam, sir, have a read. Learn about Islam. Tonight, Abu Halim is preaching his radical message on Oxford Street. It seems he's treated as a celebrity, even by those who don't necessarily agree with him. How do you know Abu Halim? I've seen him on Facebook, I've seen him on one of his videos. What do you think of the video? Um, I don't even know what he's saying. <laughs> It was kind of funny though. How often are you getting recognised? All the time, man. All the time. Everywhere I go. While shoppers pass unaware of the radical group, yet again it's a Muslim who speaks out to oppose them. This is a front to recruiting people for ISIS, who are terrorists, who are killing people in their hundreds and thousands in Syria and Iraq. You've been following me around for months. Have you seen me recruit for ISIS? Brainwashed. They're brainwashed. The drawer of Abu Halima's message has attracted another young man, Abu Matassim from Birmingham, who's recently been raided by the police. Well, they took my passport off me for travelling. They believe I was going somewhere else, but I don't know where I was going. So they took my passport off. I'm not allowed to apply for another passport ever, or I'm not allowed to travel outside of the UK ever. Ever? Ever. How does it make you feel? It makes me feel very good. Really? Why? Because it makes me feel important. The thing is, at the end of the day, if they keep pressuring people like this and you keep taking away people's passports, some people will end up lashing out. It's natural, isn't it? It's natural. People are going to get frustrated. They're going to end up doing things they don't want to do. Well, I have to think that might look. It could happen any day. You know, someone could just lose it any day now. And just, you know what I mean? A few weeks later, Abu Halima's words proved chillingly prophetic. Some uh, breaking news. Reports are coming in of an attack, or quite possibly several attacks, in Paris. More than 120 people have been killed in Paris, and more than 200 are injured in a series of attacks across the city. Last night, it was incredibly busy. There were vigils here, there were vigils at the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower was lit up in red, white and blue, which I think is a sign of hope. Sorry. <laughs> so sorry. Graham. I, and I will leave it there. There, there is certainly hope here in Paris, but that is back to you. 
The eyes to the right, 397. The nose to the left, 223. So the eyes have it. The eyes have it. What are your thoughts on Paris, the attacks? The Paris attacks? But to be honest, it's like Malcolm X said, isn't it? The chickens have come home to roost, isn't it? So it's something they brought upon themselves. This is what happens in war, isn't it? Obviously, we don't condone the killing of innocents, but this is what happens in war. You know, if you're going to kill other people's innocents, then obviously people are going to be upset. It's like me. If someone ran into my house when I went at home and they killed my wife and kids, what am I going to do? I'm going to find out where he lives. I'm going to find out where he lives. You know what I mean? It's as simple as the way the world works. That's the way the world's always worked. You can see what happened in Paris was an awful atrocity. Uh, yeah, obviously, these things are always awful, isn't it? They're always awful. But obviously, they, they know why it happened. And for them to go around and for Kuffar to go around expecting everyone, Muslim, or who they believe is a spokesman, to apologize for it or to condemn it, then that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. What I'm saying in my videos, this is the basic message of Islam. And the, 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 the aim of these videos is to radicalize people. It's to brainwash people, it's to clean their brain of the filth of the kufr. And obviously, if ISIS is calling to the same thing, then that's just a coincidence. Is it just a coincidence? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you radicalize for ISIS? No. Do you recruit for ISIS? No. Do you condone ISIS? No. Do you support ISIS? No comment. Why no comment? Huh? Why no comment? It is something that I can't answer. If I answer anyway, it could, you know what I mean? So. Because I, I do, I mean, honestly believe that over the last 12 months, what I've seen, I'd say you do all of those things. Yeah, obviously we, we don't, innit? <laughs> That's the truth, we don't. We don't. And anyone that says that they do is going to get themselves in trouble and get nicked. For the truth is, you just don't want to get arrested. Of course. <laughs> Who does? Who wants to get arrested for? Even after filming for a year, Abu Halima won't admit that his group had directly linked to ISIS. But on the 3rd of January 2016, breaking news headlines would seem to contradict him. Tonight at 10, we named the British man said to be the main suspect in the latest propaganda video released by so-called Islamic State. Analysis suggests there are similarities to this man, Abu Rumaysa, who jumped bail in 2014 and fled to Syria with his wife and four children. On the 3rd of January, 2016, I received a text from Mohammed with a link to the execution video. Underneath it read, simply, you may know the voice. This is a message to David Cameron. It seems that you, just like your predecessors, Blair and Brown, are just as arrogant and foolish. When you texted me the link, I instantly recognised it okay. as being Abu Ramesa. Okay. So from my perspective, 95%, because Fair you could enough. always be wrong. But you've known him for 16 years. I've known him for a long time. And what, what I'm willing to say on camera, yeah, is there a likeness? Definitely, you can say there's a resemblance. Is it him? I can't make that 100% positive allegation without seeing the face. Mohammed has been repeatedly arrested, but never jailed. And it's clear that he's learned to avoid incriminating himself. I have no problem in saying that Abu Ramesh is a friend of mine. More than my friend, he's my Muslim brother. Yeah, that's, that's, that's beyond any type of friendship, yeah? Because we are linked by the bond of Islam. Is Abu Ramesh a hero of yours? Abu Ramesh, for me, is a very good Muslim. I say, I think he's a murderer. I think he's from the best of Muslims. Best of Muslims, yes. even putting a bullet in the back of an unarmed man's head. That's you saying that, but I'm saying he's from the best of the best of the best. I can't say more than what I've said. And there's a reason for that. There's no free speech in the UK. There's consequences for what you say. Allah told me to take my precautions, yeah? And Allah obliged me not to put myself in the hands of the kufa. But he also told you to tell the truth. And I am speaking the truth. No, you're not. I am. You're evading the questions each time. I'm not evading the questions. And I'd rather you just tell I'm, me you're I'm, evading I'm, because you don't want the police I'm, in. I'm giving you an answer in my capacity. You're not giving me any answer. I'm giving you an answer in my capacity, yeah, as a person who studies Islamic law and is commenting on world events. I've been filming with Mohammed for a long time now, 
but there's still one question that I have to ask him. You say that your message can be deadly. Our message is deadly, of course. It is. We're calling for world domination. We want the Sharia of the UK. So for that alone, that, that message is quite deadly, yeah. So if that's the case, are the government not right to be raiding, arresting, coming down near like a ton of bricks? At the end of the day, it's a war between truth and falsehood. Uh, our message is the truth, and the message of the British government is falsehood. Is it not between so, extremists and the government? No, it's between truth and falsehood. And uh, what we carry is the truth, and what the British government is falsehood, and that's the battle that's going to rage until the day of judgment. The ultimate goal for us is, is paradise. What happens if there is no paradise? Well, there is 100%. And Jamie, I'd advise you, to embrace Islam and inshallah, you'll be eligible for paradise as well one day. Otherwise, hellfire awaits those who disbelieve. For all the caution that Muhammad and Abu Halima employ, it's clear in the journey of Abu Ramesa that the connection between non-violent extremism and terrorism is absolute. It seems to me that it's the vital link required to create a terrorist executioner. Support information can be found online at channel4.com slash support organizations. Later, they call him the pusher. Is a serial killer really at large on the canals of Manchester, or are they unfortunate accidents, re-examining the evidence at 11? But next up, child inmates and their serious crimes, high security for kid criminals.